Oh boy, here we go on a Wednesday. You hear the music, you know what time it is. It's time for your Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast. Standing by in the studio, just itching to talk with us, realty expert John Brodeen. We'll talk with him right after this. Life with its many stages. From the, my little one has just arrived stage to the I have arrived stage. From the first home you'll ever buy to the one home you'll have forever. No matter where you find yourself in life, your forever agent will be there. Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. For you, for life. All right, and we are back. Realty expert John Brodeen in the house. Just itching to talk to uh, talk with me, right? Yeah. Just oh, itching. Yeah. Uh, how you been? Good, good. Good. How are you? Good, good. Um, you're going on another trip. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. So where are you going? Tulum, Mexico. Oh. So, uh, that's a spot we really like. Okay, you're not bringing the kid? No. Oh, no. grandma just, and grandpa. Just us two. Grandma and grandpa. Hey, they're, they're perfect. The, both grandma and grandpas are splitting the duties. So. Oh, okay, okay. Just yep. gone for like a week. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We're leaving on Sunday, coming back uh, on Saturday. Okay. So. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What's up? Do you go to the tanning bed before oh yeah I'll hit the tanning bed <laughs> i times. thought so yeah am i yeah, looking I a little better thing. than usual yeah you do what? you do yeah. you don't look yeah you look you don't look so pale <laughs> yeah I, I don't want to blind anybody out on the beach and yeah. i also don't want to get sunburned on the first oh day i know yeah. yeah uh right now I, I'm, I'm so white i'm blue i you mean know, <laughs> yeah it's kind of nice though it's nice and warm and oh yeah i, yeah. I don't mind it i mean it's been so nice out lately but oh, if I know. it's frigid cold outside sometimes you kind of look forward to going yeah. in there for a little bit and then uh on your flight home you'll get the cold yeah you know yep. um i noticed dale the producer is wearing shorts today yeah yeah oh, jeepers you this kidding has gotta me? be the warmest february late oh, yeah. january just I shattering remember. records yeah really yeah. I, I'm not yeah. surprised. Um, all last week, I think just about every day we set a new record. That's so crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, okay, let's talk about some realty stuff here. And and we have heard this numerous times, especially talking with you about being house poor. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and, and you're going to explain this a little more and your people are going to go, oh, that's yeah. what that means. But how do you not be house poor? And let's explain house poor. Yeah. So you don't want to... Uh, max things out where you're just spending way too much of your monthly income every month on your house payment and you don't have enough left over to save you're you're scraping to get by buying the necessities and everything um, so there are some rules of thumb here it's not just you know some people just don't don't really know where to start with mm -hmm. this stuff mm -hmm. um, you can listen to personal finance guys there's a ton of them a uh, bunch of them on YouTube there's like a there's a guy named Humphrey Yang that I like on YouTube he makes great videos uh, you know, Dave Ramsey's classic. Mm -hmm. Some of his stuff has become a little bit outdated because what he says is to spend no more than 25% of your um, income mm -hmm. when you're buying a house, which that part, if you're not in an expensive area as possible, but he says put it on a 15 year loan. Yeah. So yeah. that's great advice if you if you have a high income. Yeah. yeah that's a, yeah. That's a great fantastic. advice if you're Dave Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be Dave Ramsey to be able no, to that. But if you're on the yep. higher end of the income and you live in an inexpensive area, sure, you can totally pull that off, and it's wonderful. Like you're you're gonna be so set up financially if you can do that. Oh yeah, your cost of living is yeah. huge though. You know. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna have, you know. You, you keep that payment under 25% so you're not getting too stressed out about your payment and you're also going to have it paid off so much faster, save mm -hmm. so much money on interest. So I like that train of thought if you're high income. If you're the average person out there, you know, a general rule of thumb is spending no more than 30% of your monthly income on your house payment. Um, and, you know, I know that's not possible in some of the more expensive areas in the country or if you're very low income. But, um, you know, here it's possible for a lot of people. It's not mm -hmm. possible for everybody, but that's a good place to start. Um, and it's far different from what the bank is going to pre-approve you for. So the way that the bank pre-approves you is they're going to look at your debt to income ratio. They're going to so you're going to take your um, monthly uh, before tax household income and you're going to take that. If you have no debt, you're going to take it times 0.43. And that's going to show you the maximum payment that you can afford according to the bank. Okay. This is like your max max, okay. including taxes, insurance, uh, HOA fees if you're buying a townhome or something. Sure, sure. Um, private mortgage insurance, everything. Mm -hmm. So that f helps you figure out what the absolute max payment is going to be. They're going to look for some mortgage programs vary a little bit, but I mean, um, 
you know, there's some that go a little higher, like 45, but, and I'm not a lender. I should say that, you know, so right. this is, this is, I'm just regurgitating information. I've been told by lenders. Mm -hmm. If you want to actually get pre-approved and figure out what you qualify for, talk to a local lender. If you want a list of local lenders, I can give that to you. Um, but so they're going to look at 43, a 43% debt to income ratio. Um, that's what they want to see. Now, if you've got a $500 car payment, you take that. So you take your monthly household income times 0.43, and then you would subtract from that number, your $500 a month car payment. That's what you'd be able to afford if you have some debts, you know, let's say you got a $500 a month car payment and you've got a $500 a month student loan payment. Mm -hmm. You subtract that from that number that you get after you take your income times 0.43. Oh, okay. So that's how the bank figures out how much you can afford. But, um, that's, that's going to be high. You're going to, you know, you can, if you max out what the bank's going to give you, I, I think that's maybe biting off a little more. You can right. than you can chew. Yeah. You still um, got to live. Yep. And of <laughs> course with the exceptions being if you're very low income mm -hmm. or if you are living in such an expensive area where you can't hardly get a shack for a million bucks. Right. Right. You know, that's, there's going to be exceptions. So what I'd like to do is walk people through some scenarios at some different income levels of what, okay. what this actually looks like. Cause right now, so the way I did this is we're looking at a 30 year loan term. We're looking at putting 5% down. We're looking at interest rate of 6.625%. Um, private mortgage insurance is going to be included in the payment that I'm giving. And I just used a mortgage calculator to come up with these payments. Um, property taxes here are roughly going to be 1.62% of the, um, of the value of the home. Yep. And this is with no specials. And this is also with the person having no debt. So if you do, if you want to factor this for yourself, you would just take whatever this is and subtract the debt from it. Okay. The debt payment. And that would help you figure it out. Use a mortgage calculator. I'm not a big fan of Zillow, but yeah, Mil yeah, Zillow yeah. does have a great mortgage calculator. I okay. use it all the time. So that's one <laughs> thing I can give them credit for. All right. So um, we'll start off at, let's say your household income is $80,000 a year before taxes. That comes down to $6,666 per month in household income before taxes. Um, at 30% of your household income, that puts you at a payment of about $2,000 per month. That means you could afford roughly a $233,000 home. You'll notice when I was giving those loan terms, the only thing I didn't say uh, was homeowner's insurance, how much the homeowner's insurance was going to be because we didn't use a percentage sure, for that. Sure. So for this example, for the $80,000 in income, I use $1,500 a year okay. for homeowner's insurance. Um, so I'll tell you what the homeowner's insurance is for each example. Now this is, so you'd be able to afford comfortably a $233,000 home. The bank will pre-approve you for a $340,000 loan. That's a payment of twenty eight sixty six a month compared to a payment of $2,000 a month. So there's a wide gap between the maximum allow, you know, mm -hmm. maximum the bank would likely allow, and what you can comfortably afford. So this is important for people to think about when they're. Yeah, you know, I mean, the bank doesn't care if you can live. All the bank cares about is getting their payment. Yeah, the bank just wants to make sure <laughs> you, you are going to be able to make your payment. Okay. They don't care if you know. It's not their job to force you to be responsible. Right, a lot of right. the local lenders will give you some of this advice though. They, mm -hmm. They're not trying to just sell you the maximum. Yeah. They don't want to have to go through all. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like even though you'll, you know, they have their numbers and there's a reason for their maximum numbers. I mean, that's where you could still expect the person to be able to continue paying their mortgage payment. Right. But, um, you know, it's just leaving things a little thin for things like saving, you know, you want to be able to save for retirement. Sure. You be able to you have know, something go out to eat. <laughs> Yeah, you know, a couple of times a month or something, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. So now let's look at a little higher income. We'll look at a hundred thousand dollars income, household income before taxes. So they're making uh, eighty three hundred and thirty three dollars per month. They would be able to afford a payment if we look at thirty percent of their monthly income of about twenty five hundred dollars per month, and this means they'd be able to buy a home at about two hundred ninety thousand dollars. The bank would qualify for them them for a payment almost a thousand about a thousand dollars more at thirty five hundred and eighty three dollars a month, which could buy you a four hundred and twenty five thousand dollar home. And for this example, I use two two thousand dollars a year in homeowners insurance. Okay. Okay. So now we're at a thousand dollar gap between what the bank the max of payment allowable by the bank and what you could comfortably likely comfortably afford is going to be kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. um, Next up, we're, we're taking another step up in income. If your household income is $140,000 per year, that means you're making $11,666 per month. 
um, based on the 30% rule, you could afford a $3,500 payment, uh, $3,500 a month payment on the house. That could buy you about a $410,000 home. In Grand Forks, a four hundred ten thousand dollars home is pretty nice and comfortable. It's yeah, not like the most luxury home in town or anything. But, but uh, it's above average for sure. It's above average. Yeah, yep. the average sale price in town is about at that two ninety mark. So if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year, you could comfortably afford what the average sale price. Or sure. If you're making a hundred thousand dollars per year, you could comfortably afford that um, average sale price in Grand Forks. Okay. So back to one hundred forty thousand dollars in income, we said you could afford a four hundred ten thousand dollars house, but you would qualify for a five hundred and ninety eight thousand dollar house wow. and for this example we did twenty five hundred dollars in homeowners insurance so an even bigger gap it's like a fifteen hundred dollar gap in the in the payment between what you could comfortably afford based on the 30 percent rule and what the bank's going to qualify you for okay um next next income level is one hundred seventy thousand dollars a year in household income uh, they're making fourteen thousand one hundred sixty six dollars per month they could qualify or they could comfortably afford a $4,250 a month house payment, which buys you about a $498,000 home. The bank's going to qualify them for a $6,090 house payment, which could buy a $727,000 home. And for this, we use $3,000 a year for homeowners insurance. Okay. Then the highest income level that we're uh, we, that we've got as an example here is $200,000 a year in household income, 16,666 bucks a month in before tax household income. They could afford comfortably a $5,000 a month house payment, uh, $586,000 purchase price. They would qualify for a $7,166 a month payment, uh, which could buy you an $855,000 house. Wow. And the majority of people, especially you know, when you're talking 140,000 to 200,000 dollars in income, usually it's not their first home, and this is only considering putting 5,000 dollars down. Mm -hmm. So if they had equity from a previous home or they had more cash they could put down, they'd be able to afford much more than this. But yeah, that at 200,000 dollars a year in income, 7,166 dollars a month house payment, 855,000 dollar purchase price, 3,500 dollars a month is what we use for that example for uh, homeowners insurance. So. You can see that gap is pretty wide between what you can comfortably afford and especially if you're at a higher income level and you don't feel like you need that uh, a gigantic house, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like something super luxury. It's a great financial move. That's where you might say, OK, well, um, I want to look at houses where 30 uh, percent of my income could cover a, the payment on a 15 year loan. Sure. You know, that's yeah. You could yeah. If you can even, swing it, I mean, be even a little more frugal there. So if, if and not to be house poor, if you go and and again, um, you're OK or, or, you know, they give you the go ahead for whatever, 250,000 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Are they going to tell you everything you just told me or is it better off to just use your realty expert and, and say, OK, look, Here's what the bank will give me. This is what I've qualified for. Yep. Help me out here, John. What am I really going to be looking at? So most really good local lenders will ask the person what um, what monthly payment they'd be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is, I like this because it's not trying to force them, you know, it's not trying to suggest that they max out what they right, can do. Right, right. You know, um, it. So I don't think it's very wise to max out what you can do unless you're at a very low income level. Or sure. Maybe you've got a big family, so mm -hmm. you're going to really need to stretch things as far as you can. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they, they're going to ask you what payment you're comfortable with. I've had people ask me about this kind of stuff. I put videos out about this kind of stuff. So um, I hope the information is reaching the consumers out there, the home buyers. Right. People, when people ask me about it, this is what I share with them as well. Mm -hmm. Um you know so what it, basically what it means is uh, whatever your lender is 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 giving you the the go ahead for there's still a lot more to think about yeah and and like yeah just don't think you have to get close or be at that maximum amount mm -hmm. right it's right. good to know what the maximum amount you could go up to especially if you're in an expensive market and or if you're low income but um otherwise if you have a pretty strong income and you don't have crazy needs like you don't have seven kids or something yeah, like that yeah. you know um <laughs> It, it's a wise financial move to make sure you're not house poor, make sure you have plenty yep. of mon money left over each month to start saving for retirement, you know, have that mm -hmm. emergency fund. Um, so you're not stretched too thin because that, you know, you, you don't want to have that sort of situation where you're stressed out about making your mortgage payment each month and where you'd have to be pinching pennies elsewhere just to, to live in a house that's maybe nicer and bigger than yeah. what you need. Right. So. Right. Wow. Um, again, I learned 
some stuff yeah, today. Yeah. Now, if somebody wants to find out more of, about how not to be house poor and uh, just get a hold of you, realty expert John yep. Brodine, how do they do that, man? Yeah, 701 213 5428 is my cell phone number. Um, you can call or text me there. Um, check out my Instagram page, TikTok, YouTube, uh, Facebook. I'm on all the social media platforms where I'm going to be posting content like this that's designed to help home buyers, potential home buyers, home sellers, homeowners. Uh, giving out, you know, lots of great free information. It's a good resource for local people here who want to learn more about real estate. All right. And we'll have you in one more time on Friday yeah, before you yep. take off on your vacay. Yep, I will see you Friday. All right. There you go. Realty expert, John Brodine. That's your Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast, the Wednesday edition. He'll be back again in here at the same chair Friday at 10.